What's going on guys, Brian's here. We're going to be reviewing a couple trades in which I took on Amazon this past week on August 2nd and August 3rd, 2022, right here. Now it's rare that I do a video mostly focused on technical analysis and that's what this video will be focused on. So starting with the top down approach, what we're looking at is Amazon on the daily time frame, which is generally where you're going to want to start whenever you're trying to formulate some sort of trade idea. On top of that, I'm gonna show you guys what I posted in the Quant Trading App Discord right here. So this would have been on the second. I initially opened up what's called a calendar put spread. So I was actually targeting the 130 strike price. Now I'm not going to explain exactly what that spread is comprised of, but just know on this day right here, I was actually looking for Amazon to pull back to this strike price right here of 130 as we're aware they had a massive beat on earnings and it had gapped up and we were looking at three days of consolidation. Now, if we just look at this price action right here, this is not necessarily something that I would consider as bullish. As we can see, there's a lot of wick rejections on these daily timeframes right here. And this is showing that every time price tried to go higher, Aggressive sellers came in and they actually pushed, pushed the price back down and that happened one, two, and I waited until the third day to see how the market was reacting going into power hour. So the last hour of the trading day, I noticed that Amazon was breaking below the previous day's open and that's part of what started catching my interest. On top of that, I was aware of the fact that this was starting to form an inverted hammer. Now again, the technical patterns and the technical analysis and the candlestick patterns is not exactly or solely the only thing you want to look for whenever you're trading. However, sometimes it can be just that simple if you know how to piece things together. So as we look right here, as I zoom out again, we have some key levels that were on the uh, daily time frame right here. And we can see that this level, which was previous support, is likely to act as, pre as future resistance. And that's just basic technical analysis 101. But again, you can't take a trade solely just on technical analysis as you guys can see amazon actually ended up going higher so the initial trade in which i opened was a loss and i actually want to show you guys one other confluence in which i was aware of which was this right here so this if we take it a little bit larger this was just a screenshot from trading view in which i was showing the year-to-date anchored vwap so this is the open of amazon and this is where i was looking at, at the time i was aware that it was getting rejected again at the year-to-date anchored vwap so i was expecting this whole area to act as supply or act as some sort of resistance and it was being proven that a price could not go higher for th three days in a row so generally after three days of price failing and we have a massive gap below it you can kind of expect it to actually pull back the next couple days again this is what i was expecting however whenever i first open a trade i generally like to think what will happen if the trade goes wrong the reason in which i opened up this spread right here is because i was looking to put on a very minimal amount of risk which means if i was wrong and amazon did go higher i actually was not going to lose much more than 15 20 percent tops and I would have been allowed to actually let price rally maybe five points against me before deciding if I wanted to close it. So initially I didn't put on much risk. And as I actually mentioned in the quant trading app discord was that I didn't find much confluence yet for a pullback. I wasn't entirely completely confident in the trade as all I was just looking at was just the technical analysis, the rejections right here on the daily time frame, and the year to date anchored VWAP. I'll show you guys the GEX in a couple seconds, which is just a gamma exposure for it on that day. But before I jump into that, I want to show you guys something else that I was also aware of. So let's dial it down to the 15 minute time frame. And let's actually just draw a couple trend lines on the chart right here so we have this downward trend as we can see right here depending on how you draw your trend lines everyone has their own uh, method so that's why it's it's an art not necessarily a science right here i don't rely solely on technical analysis but i just want to show you guys sometimes it is smart to be aware of these certain patterns as the patterns do hold true depending on the uh, time frame which you're in or depending on what type of market we're in so in other words if we see this type of you know pattern forming which is referred to as a bull pennant if you see this type of pattern forming and we're in a bull market the likelihood of continuation is much higher in this case we're acting on the back of a large uh, earnings beat so there's a lot of bu bullish momentum in amazon at the moment so the earnings catalyst is something that can shift the sentiment for a company if a company comes out and they say they're going to raise forward guidance or they had an earnings beat or they had more revenue than most people were expecting or xyz more profits you know anything that's really going to make investors happy that can create technical patterns that can allow us to trade to get continuation for the moves it's just about being patient and timing the trades correctly but that's where these patterns come into play so as we jump into this right here would be the second and this was a uh, Tuesday and the next day in which I took the trade was on the Wednesday, but we'll get into that in a second. So as we're looking at this on the Tuesday here around here is when I entered in the short trade because as we can see, we had another little pattern forming intraday right here, which was this bear flag. So I was expecting the breakdown and again, I was expecting continuation down to at least the 130 level, potentially even all the way down here to 123, which would have been the complete gap fill. So I entered the put calendar spread again, using this as my profit window here and if price 
price was to continue selling off, I would have just gotten some naked puts, you know, understanding that I already had a trade that's working for me. And that's the swing trade, which is why I gave it plenty of time, plenty of time to work itself out. If we jump back to the actual trade, let's just see which expirations I went with. So I went with a 16 days till expiration trade right here, which would have been the 19th of August. And then this was the uh, contracts in which I would be short. These are the contracts in which I'm long and the contracts in which I'm long had 44 days till expiration to play themselves out. I think it's very important whenever you open up a trading position to consider how much will you be down if something went wrong or what are you going to do if the position goes against you. So being aware of the fact that I was essentially shorting what would be referred to as a bullish pattern right here on the larger time frame, I came in the next day almost expecting to be long. So in other words, I was expecting to take a loss on the initial trade and knowing that I didn't put much risk on the trade, it allowed me to think with a clear head expecting to stop out of, stop out of that trade the following day and fully prepare to adjust and just go long the next day. And that's essentially what I did right here. So aware of the pattern let's take a look again at the discord and show exactly what i was looking at the following day so this was pre-market here so the trend line was drawn out a little bit differently so let's actually just draw out the exact same trend line right here so i'm showing you guys two different ways to actually look at this price action so we have a different view right here and this is how some people like to draw out their trend lines also sometimes whenever i'm drawing them out i like to uh, consider just the exact using the exact tops and the exact lows or sometimes i look at where there's the most amount of touches i'm not really spending that much time drawing uh, patterns on my chart anymore as most of the time you can just eyeball it and see exactly that a pennant is forming. I don't need to draw these trend lines out while the market is open to necessarily know that there's a pennant right here. I mean, you can just look at the chart. If you've been doing this for years, you can just glance at a chart and all of these things kind of uh, scream out to you. Outside of trading, I'm a fashion photographer and videographer. So identifying patterns and things like that comes as second nature to me, but I'll generally draw them out if I'm trying to share a picture for other traders to be aware of, or if I'm doing something like a YouTube video for you guys right now, it just makes it easier for some of you new guys to be able to know what to look for. So looking at this pre-market i'm just posting this this was exactly just a couple minutes right before the bell actually rung here as i'm in an eastern time so so 9 uh, 30 i mean 9 28 right now is two minutes before the market opens so just fully prepared to just grab some calls at the open so as soon as the market opened here i uh, hopped into calls and i believe it was a pretty quick scalp so i just hopped in the 140 calls for the monthly expirations was filled at 285 and was out at a uh, 335 exactly right around just before 10 a.m so a good rule of thumb is whenever you're scalping if you're taking an opening drive scalp which means you're getting in the contracts generally within the first couple minutes you usually want to be flat the trade or out the trade by 10 a.m eastern time because 10 a.m there's generally again 10 a.m eastern time so it depends on your time during your time zone obviously you have to adjust but 30 minutes after the market opens you generally want to be looking to close out your opening trade as the market is very likely to put in a reversal at 10 a.m even if there's going to be continuation to the upside as you guys can see right here amazon pulled back before it ultimately ended up continuing to go higher so i initially close out the trade right before the uh, market reverse right here so if we actually take a look at the contracts this is on the right hand side the contracts in which i traded i generally always like to trade the monthly contracts whenever i'm even if i'm scalping unless unless it's a friday and i really want to just scalp some zero days which i'm not doing a lot of these days but even if I'm planning to be in the trade for 25, 30 minutes, I will still go two weeks out. I will go to the monthly contracts just because I'm used to selling theta. I generally run a lot of spreads. And when I trade naked options, I'm not really that comfortable anymore holding short term contracts unless I'm only looking to scalp them for a few minutes. But because I knew this was a trade that was likely going to go all the way up to 140, I wanted to make sure there was enough time on the trade that wouldn't allow me to second guess or second doubt holding the position. Even if I thought it was going to do it within the same week, I'll generally go two to three weeks out. Out. So this is my initial entry here at 285 and then again flat right here at 345 uh, right before the reversal as I mentioned before and then it pulled back. As I mentioned before though I was expecting Amazon to go all the way up to uh, the 140 level so let's actually take a look at something else right here that I forgot to show you guys before we jumped into that. This is the uh, volume profile so another reason in which I was looking to go short is because as you guys can see here's our volume profile here's our value areas and on the Tuesday the value area was actually pretty low and the point of control was lower than the previous day's low so all of this action right here was showing me that we're probably we're probably going to go lower however as you guys can see I was actually wrong initially and the fact that price gapped up and being aware of the fact that it was gapping up almost over the entire previous day's value area that's a sign that there's going to be a lot of people because this looks pretty this looked pretty quote unquote bearish and for everyone else that was thinking that Amazon was going to fill this gap they're essentially going to look to 
to close their positions. And if shorts are closing their positions, it means they're actually buying positions. So when you short something, it means you're actually selling it first. And then when you're looking to close the position, you're buying it back later. So shorts will be looking to close their positions, which would actually drive price higher. On top of that, we have momentum traders that are aware of the technical pattern that will be looking for the continuation once these trend lines break. So understanding that there was going to be momentum at the back of this trade, understanding that it will go to 140 was very likely. On top of that, let's just take a look at something that's referred to as gamma exposure. So if we take a look right here, Here's Amazon's gamma exposure. This would be on the second again. So this is as the market has closed. This is Quant Trading app right here. It takes screenshots throughout the day and it automatically posts these in the Discord as an archive so we can go back and take a look. And as well as throughout the day, you don't need to go to the website and actually, you know, research this information as we can. But if you're just looking for quick information, this is posted periodically throughout the day. So again, this right here was August 2nd. As the market closed, we can see that there was a massive amount of positive gamma right here at the 140 strike. So being aware that this was like likely going to act as some sort of magnet if there was going to be continued momentum. This right here is showing the spot price. So this is the price in which Amazon was currently at when the screenshot was taken. And then we can see that the absolute gamma strike as well as Max Payne was all the way down at 130. So this was actually adding confluence to my short trade. However, it was important to be aware of the fact that there was a lot of positive gamma at the 140 strike. So as we can see, as we jumped into the next day, this was right before the market opened and we can see how this actually ended up looking. So the absolute gamma strike was 140 again. So so we can see that there's a lot of open interest for puts and calls for this expiration right here. And that's going to create some sort of a magnet or it's going to act as a strong support if Amazon did get down to this level. Now, if Amazon got down to 130, I would not have hesitated to actually look for a long setup. But on top of that, we can see that the positive gamma was actually growing. There was a ton of open interest right back here at the 140 strike. So almost 25,000 open interest. And we can see that strike price stands out in comparison to every other strike price. We can see that there's a lot of positive gamma right here or a lot of positive call open interest right here around 20,000. So this is pretty good for, you know, if you're a bull and you're looking to be long, you want to see this type of positive gamma. You want to see that type of high open interest on the call side. If we scroll right around, if we scroll down now throughout the day and let's jump to the, um, as the day progressed right here, we can see that Amazon made it all the way up to 140, but actually I got ahead of myself. Let's just scroll back to the start of the day and take a look at something right here. We can see that the market opens and we have a lot of volume starts coming into the at the money call which is 138 and that's what's showing right here at the same time you guys can see in the background there was a lot of open interest as, as we knew from the previous day as well as pre-market but there was a lot of volume coming into the 140 strike and you guys can see amazon actually jumped up a couple points so now we had over 10,000 volume and this was only 18 minutes after the market opened it was already a lot of volume going into that strike price and you can see there wasn't that much volume going into the puts now, as we continue to scroll right along, let's take a look at this right here. We can see the open interest continuing to grow. So now we have over 30 something thousand of volume going into the 140 strike. And this was for the weekly expiration. So three days till expiration, not the same contract in which I was trading. The trade would have worked out just as fine and probably a higher percentual regain, or actually definitely a higher percentual gain if I actually just grabbed the 140 calls that expired on Friday. But again, I did not want the theta to be uh, burning away at the contract too much as I didn't know if the trade was going to work out within the same day but it ultimately ended up happening so as we can see now this is 1 p.m eastern time amazon was actually just about to hit 140 and we can see that the uh positive gamma was growing tremendously as well as all of the uh, volume was starting to hit over 50,000 at this point it's behind the uh pillar right here so we can't exactly see what the exact number was but on the website we would have been able to see exactly what the uh, value was but as we can continue to scroll right here we can see that there was a lot of volume continuing to go into the calls for amazon so now as we jump back to the chart that was actually adding a little bit of uh, confluence or as well as a lot of confidence in terms of expecting Amazon to go to 140. So what I so what I ended up doing right here is I ended up getting back into the trade. So I posted someone had asked me if there was a potential for any good swings. And then I mentioned the 140 strike as a potentially a good call to swing for Amazon. So I hopped back in the call for 335, just waiting for once it broke the trend line again, I re entered the call contract and then I expected it to go to 140 and I held it until it hit just about 140. So this is when I re-entered back in the contract right here. And this is just as Amazon was breaking back out 
over the trend line and then again ultimately went flat or close the trade going flat is another uh, way of saying close the trade so at 415 is when when the strike when the contract hit 415 is when I closed the trade so in terms of percentual gains on the initial opening drive scalp it was about a 20% return and then re-entering the trade as it was breaking out again from here to here was a 23% uh, return now the reason I generally don't day trade, day trade that often is because when you can piece together this much information and you understand that there's a lot of momentum behind the trade the technicals lined up we saw a lot of positive gamma exposure we saw the volume going into the trade we understand the catalysts again earnings we understand that there was a lot of momentum in the market this past uh, week here um, something that's also important to understand is when something looks really bearish and then it breaks out then it's likely to go even higher because a lot of traders were trapped and a lot of traders were wrong initially that's also going to help propel the price within a certain direction so piecing all those things together if we take a look at this generally i would swing something like this but because i'm expecting the market to pull back sometime soon because things are pretty overextended i didn't feel that comfortable holding the trade as it's not like i was long from all the way down here i generally like to swing way before the move happens so this is just a momentum move and momentum moves can fizzle out very quickly and i'm not much of a of a scalper these days as i'm not much of a day trader so much i generally again like to swing trades but in this case i do regret not swinging the contract because as we can see it actually and went all the way up the uh, next day all the way up to six dollars and change so well over 100 percent return from my initial entry right here i should have held on a couple runners to potentially pull in an extra uh, 700 bucks just on this trade here again keeping risk small whenever i'm trading naked contracts or i'm looking to Put on some sort of momentum move i generally always like to accept the fact that i can take a potentially a 50 percent loss so in other words if i have a position size of one thousand dollars i'm going to say my risk law my risk on the trade is going to be 500 bucks and that's essentially going to be where i cut the trade so 500 dollars in directional trades is not necessarily going to hurt that much and again this is not the core you know thesis or the core part of my uh, trading as i generally run non-directional spreads i run a lot of trades that rely on theta a lot of calendar spreads a lot of call diagonals in some way i would generally approach this trade if i'm looking to swing it as it can as it will have plenty of time to work itself out and i won't have to worry about theta but if i'm willing to accept the 50 percent loss it means that the, i would have to be completely wrong in the trade and amazon would have to come all the way back down here you can accept the 50 percent loss only when you're giving the trade enough time to play itself out so if you go three weeks out or so it's going to be very difficult for you to lose 50 percent you'll have plenty of time to decide if you want to cut the trade or sometimes you can just hop in one weekly uh put at the money and if you're wrong in this contract just and uh the stock price just reverses on you and it keeps selling off you're going to make so much on just getting one put that you'll forget that you were even long to begin with but um that's only if something is you know going wrong let's just say amazon was filling the gap or you know it was filling the gap or even at the open it just the moment it opened up it just started selling right back off here obviously if you went long as soon as that happened you could have just closed the trade out immediately only taking maybe a 50 cent loss or something like that or even from you know from the initial entry from here to here that only would have been about the 50 percent loss the 50 cent loss in which i'm talking about so if you're in four contracts that's a 200 dollars loss and your max stop loss would be something like 500 bucks you know it all depends on everyone's risk management but that's just something that works for myself 50 percent as i use as a rule of thumb and not that i'm saying i'm going to accept the full 50 percent loss but that's essentially going to be the max loss in which i'm looking to take so if i cut it at you know down 20 percent which is generally where i'll take uh, a loss on something like this it means i left myself enough wiggle room to potentially put that risk in a different you know structure maybe that's when i'll use that risk for a different spread because as you guys can see because as i show you guys right here if we take a look um i believe by the time i actually closed out the spread i waited until much later in the day so i initially so i eventually closed this out for a 17 percent loss which is not a big loss you know on a trade like this but there was no reason in my mind to continue to hold this as the momentum was carrying amazon up higher even though generally i will add another tent right here and then i would just let theta continue to do its thing for something like amazon i wasn't necessarily sitting in amazon for two weeks while i waited to collect on um theta for for a trade like this so i just cut the loss and just kept it moving as i made more than enough from actually taking the momentum move here on the naked calls so that's kind of my last point i guess you can say for this video that sometimes you want to make sure you're flexible with your trades especially if you're swing trading if something goes wrong you can prepare from the night before what contracts you're going to trade i already knew i was going to be trading the uh, 140 calls uh, for the monthlies. I was already expecting it to potentially go wrong just because there wasn't enough, you know, strong signs from the day before. They made it, it made, it was pretty easy because there was the technical patterns as well as the fact that it gapped up over the, uh, 
and open and just pushed right over the value area from the previous day. So all of these things made it very comfortable to just, as you guys can see, it wasn't really a lot of uh, scalping or I wasn't in a million positions here. It was essentially just two clean trades. It was one open, one close, and then one open and one close. And that's generally how I like to uh, day trade. I don't like to scalp, you know, 50 million, you know, trades in, in one day. I want to make sure I can justify exactly why am I doing, what am I doing? And that's something I think that you should ask yourself too. If you're looking to put on a position, can you list, you know, three to five reasons as to why you took the trade? Were you able to see the trade before it happened? Was there confluence on the daily time frame? On a larger time frame, it doesn't necessarily need to be the daily, but the fact that we had this clear pattern here, the fact that it pulled in, it held this level, it cracked back over VWAP and then it cracked this trend, added a little bit of confidence now because I knew what the level to risk off of was going to be if it broke down below VWAP. And I really liked the fact that it actually formed a couple uh, important pin, pins right here as, as it's referred to. So we have a hammer candle, a pin bar, as some people like to refer to it. Let's uh, turn off the extended hours and we can see this right here. So this is a very clear uh, for me. This is something I'm generally always looking for. Is there a clear rejection off of a key level? Obviously, I had a few other confluences aside from Gex by using the Quant Trading App platform, but I wanted to leave a lot of that stuff out for this video and just focus on clean price action, some technical analysis. And I did show you guys a little bit of the Gex, which is the gamma exposure, as well as I was using the options chain as a little bit of my edge, understanding that a lot of volume and a lot of open interest was going into the 140 strike. If you enjoyed this video, guys, leave a comment down below, like the video, share it. Link is in the description to the Quant Trading App Discord, as well as the Quant Trading App platform. If you're interested in learning a little bit more about gamma exposure, Gex, as well as other ways on how I trade. Thanks for watching.